of the people, for the people and by the people. The Indian constitution, the longest of any sovereign nation in the world, provides a comprehensive framework to guide and govern the country, keeping in view her social, cultural and religious diversity. Hello and a very warm welcome viewers. You're watching our special presentation on major constitutional amendments that changed and shaped India. So come along. A distinctive document with many extraordinary features. The Constitution of India is the longest written constitution of any sovereign nation in the world. The original text of the Constitution contained 395 articles in 22 parts and 8 schedules. It came into effect on January 26, 1950, the day India celebrates each year as the Republic Day. It established the main organs, executive, legislature and judiciary, defining their powers, demarcating their responsibilities and regulating the interrelationship. It lays down the basic structure of governance and the relationship between the government and the people. The rights and duties of citizens are also spelt out. The preamble to the constitution declares India to be a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic and a welfare state committed to justice, liberty and equality for the people and for promoting fraternity, dignity of the individual and unity and integrity of the nation. The objectives specified in the preamble constitute the basic structure of the Indian constitution which cannot be amended. The opening and last sentences of the preamble, we the people adopt, enact and give to ourselves this constitution signifies the power is ultimately vested in the hands of the people. एक ऐसा देश जिसके बारे में आशंका जताई जाती थी कि वो अपनी आजादी बरकरार नहीं रख पाएगा जिसके बारे में कहा जाता था वो बिखर जाएगा आज पूरे सामर्थ्य से अपनी सभी विविधताओं पर गर्व करते हुए यह देश आगे बढ़ रहा है और इन सब के पीछे हमारी सबसे बड़ी ताकत हमारा संविधान है हमारे संविधान के प्रेम्बल की शुरुआत में जो वी द पीपल लिखा है ये सिर्फ तीन शब्द नहीं है वी द पीपल एक आह्वान है एक प्रतिज्ञा है एक विश्वास है संविधान में लिखी ये भावना उस भारत की मूल भावना है जो दुनिया में लोकतंत्र की जननी रहा है मदर ऑफ डेमोक्रेसी रहा है द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन वॉज फ्रेम्ड बाय द कंस्टिट्यूएंट असेंबली ऑफ इंडिया स्टैब्लिश बाय द मेंबर्स ऑफ द प्रोवेंशियल असेंबलीज इलेक्टेड बाय द पीपल ऑफ इंडिया डॉक्टर सचिदानंद सिन्हा वॉज द फर्स्ट प्रेजिडेंट ऑफ द कंस्टिट्यूएंट असेंबली लेटर डॉक्टर राजेंद्र प्रसाद वॉज इलेक्टेड इट्स प्रेजिडेंट डॉक्टर बी आर अम्बेडकर द चेयरमैन ऑफ इट्स ड्राफ्टिंग कमिटी इज कंसिडर्ड the chief architect of the indian constitution which provides a comprehensive and dynamic framework to guide and govern us at independence india was not merely large and diverse but also deeply divided a constitution designed to keep the country together and to take it forward had necessarily to be an elaborate carefully worked out and painstakingly draft a document for one thing it sought to heal wounds of the past and the present to make indians of different classes castes and communities come together in a shared political experiment for another it sought to nurture democratic institutions 
in what had long been a culture of hierarchy and deference. The Constitution of India was framed between December 1946 and November 1949. During this time, its drafts were discussed clause by clause in the Constituent Assembly of India. In all, the Assembly held 11 sessions, with sittings spread over 165 days. In between the sessions, the work of revising and refining the drafts was carried out by various committees and subcommittees. Prem Bihari Narayan Rai Zada was the calligrapher of the Indian constitution. The original constitution was written by him in a flowing italic style. The calligraphy of Hindi version of the original constitution was done by Basant Krishna Vedya. An impartial judiciary, independent of the legislature and executive, is one of the main features of the constitution. The Supreme Court of India is the highest court of the country and acts as a guardian of the constitution and serves as the final court of appeal. There are many autonomous institutions set up under the constitution which perform key role such as Election Commission of India responsible for holding free and fair elections, Public Service Commission responsible for selection to maintain government services and Auditor General for independent audit of accounts of the government and its agencies. Another novel feature of the constitution is that it contains a chapter on the directive principles of state policy that are in the nature of directives to the government to implement them for establishing social and economic democracy in our country. These principles are considered fundamental in the governance of our country. The story of the Indian constitution is not a story only of legal text and legal interpretation. It is a story of human struggles and sacrifices. It is a story of undoing injustice against the marginalized sections of our society, the women, the disabled, the Dalits, and members belonging to tribes and segments situated in far-flung areas of the country. It must be remembered that the marginalized communities were the first to plant the seeds of the constitutional ideas of liberty, equality and fraternity on Indian soil. The first wave of resistance against the colonial power came from the indigenous communities of India. Our constitution is a social contract entered into between those who were in power historically and those who were oppressed and sought to change the power hegemony and chose to govern themselves. Coincidentally, this year marks 75 years since our nation attained independence. India's liberation from colonial rule and the drafting of the constitution were simultaneous projects. The prolonged struggle for independence culminated with the demise of the colonial reign and the birth of an independent nation governed by self-rule. One of the strengths of the constitution is that it is a dynamic instrument that can evolve with time either by its interpretation or amendment. The constitution of India is one of the most frequently amended constitutions in the world so as not to stand in the way of the growth and development of the nation and her people. Article 368 of the Constitution deals with the power of Parliament to amend the Constitution and its procedures. It states that the Parliament may amend the Constitution by way of addition, variation or repeal of any provision in accordance with the procedure laid down for the purpose. However, the Parliament cannot amend those provisions which form the basic structure of the Constitution. This was ruled by the Supreme Court in the Keshwanand Bharti case. It provides for two types of amendments, that is, by a special majority of parliament and the special majority of parliament, along with the ratification of half of the state's legislatures by a simple majority. Under Article 368.2, parliament can amend the constitution by passing a bill with a special majority. An amendment of the constitution can be initiated only by the introduction of a bill for the purpose in either House of Parliament, Lok Sabha or the Rajya Sabha and not in the state legislatures. The bill can be introduced either by a minister 
or by a private member and does not require prior permission of the president. Each house must pass the bill separately. The president must give his assent to the bill. He or she can neither withhold his or her assent to the bill nor return the bill for reconsideration of parliament. After the president's assent, the bill becomes an act, that is, the Constitutional Amendment Act, and the Constitution stands amended in accordance with the terms of the Act. As of October 2021, there have been 105 amendments of the Constitution of India since it was first enacted in 1950. Let's take a look at some of the landmark amendments that shaped India. Passed in 1951, the First Amendment to the Constitution altered Articles 15, 15 3, 46, 341, 342, 372 and 376. Empowering states to make any special provision for the advancement of any socially and educationally backward classes of citizens or for the scheduled castes and scheduled tribes. Post the amendment, the state is prevented from enacting laws curbing citizens' rights to freedom of expression and to practice any trade, occupation or business. But the amendment also introduced three new exceptions to the right to free speech. Now, citizens did not have the right to speak freely if their words imperiled public order, incited the commission of an offence or affected friendly relations with the foreign states. In 1956, the Nehru government passed the Seventh Amendment, which abolished the distribution of states into classes A, B, C and D and introduced the Union Territories of India. This act listed out all the states Andhra Pradesh, Assam, Bihar, Bombay, Kerala, Madhya Pradesh, Madras, Mysore, Orissa, Punjab, Rajasthan and Uttar Pradesh, West Bengal and Jammu and Kashmir and divided them on a linguistic basis as per the States Reorganization Act of 1956. It also specified the boundaries of each of the states and what territories they incorporated. 42nd Amendment Act enacted in 1976 during emergency by Indira Gandhi government. It is regarded as one of the most controversial amendment so far. In the preamble, three additional terms that is socialist, secular and integrity were included. The 42nd Amendment is the most comprehensive amendment in the history of Indian constitutional amendments. It consisted of 59 clauses and carried out so many changes that it has been termed as a mini-constitution. The amendment stated that the President shall act in accordance to the Council of Ministers. It enabled the Centre to deploy armed forces for dealing with situations of law and order in any state. It authorised the President to declare emergency in a part of the country. The 46th Amendment changed the whole complexion of the Constitution, making Parliament the supreme sovereign body, excluding courts, entirely from the election disputes, strengthening central government to rule as a unit, not as a federal system, cutting down the judicial powers to challenge legislations. The 44th Amendment Act was introduced in the year 1978 by the government. 44th Amendment Act modified the constitutional emergency provisions and prevented them from being misused in the future. It deleted the right to property from the list of fundamental rights and made it only a legal right. Provided that the fundamental rights guaranteed by Articles 20 and 21 cannot be suspended during a national emergency. Cracking down on political defections, the Rajiv Gandhi government passed the 52nd Amendment in 1985 which disqualified a member of either House of Parliament, Legislative Assembly or Council of the State under provisions of the 10th schedule. This act was further strengthened by the Atal Bihari Vajpayee government in 2003 with the 91st Amendment which stated that any disqualified member cannot hold any remunerative political post from his disqualification date to the expiry of his office term or the date on which he is re-elected to a house whichever is earlier. The 91st Amendment also fixed the total number of ministers including the Prime Minister in the Council of Ministers to 15% of Lok Sabha's strength. A similar limit was applied to state cabinets as well. Passed by the Rajiv Gandhi government in 1988, the 61st Amendment reduced the voting age from 21 years to 18 years, making the right to vote a constitutional right. 
73rd and 74th constitutional amendments were passed by Parliament in December 1992. Through these amendments, local self-governance was introduced in rural and urban India. The Acts came into force as the Constitution 73rd Amendment Act 1992 on April 24, 1993 and the Constitution 74th Amendment Act 1992 on June 1, 1993. The Constitution 86th Amendment Act 2002 enshrined right to education as a fundamental right in Part 3 of the Constitution. A new Article 21A was inserted below Article 21, which made right to education a fundamental right for children in the age 6 to 14 years. Considered to be the biggest constitutional change in Indian polity in modern times, the Narendra Modi government in 2016 passed the 101st Amendment, altering Article 246 to empower the Parliament to make laws with respect to goods and services tax, or the GST, in interstate trade or commerce. 17 different taxes levied by the central and state and UT governments with cascading effect of tax on tax were consolidated into one GST. India became a common market. GST resulted in increased tax base, higher collections and ease of doing business. This reduced the interface between the taxpayers and the government for day-to-day -day operations and assessment. Interstate movements became faster more efficient and hassle-free, with no entry tax, check posts and truck queues, among others. In a landmark ruling, the Supreme Court upheld, by 3-2 majority, the Constitution 103rd Amendment Act 2019, introducing 10% reservation for the economically weaker sections, or EWS, among the unreserved categories in admissions and government jobs. Article 15 of the Constitution prohibits discrimination against any citizen on the ground of race, religion, caste, sex or place of birth. However, the government may make special provisions for the advancement of socially and educationally backward classes or for scheduled castes and scheduled tribes. Constitution 103rd Amendment Act is for economic preservation in jobs and admissions in educational institutes for economically weaker sections. It was enacted to promote the welfare of the poor, not covered by 50% reservation policy for scheduled castes, scheduled tribes and socially and educationally backward classes. It enables both the centre and the states to provide reservations to the EWS of the society. 104th Amendment of the Indian Constitution extended the deadline for the secession of seats for SCs and STs in the Lok Sabha and state assemblies from 70 years to 80. It removed the reserve seats for the Anglo-Indian community in the Lok Sabha and State Assemblies. Struggles and the sacrifices of our founding fathers. The founding fathers placed immense responsibility on the coming generations of countrymen to take the country forward in the path of progress. It would be apt to recall the words of Baba Sahib, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, when he cautioned us by saying, let us not forget that this independence has thrown on us great responsibilities. By independence, we have lost the excuse of blaming the British for anything going wrong. If hereafter things go wrong, we will have nobody to blame except ourselves. In one of his speeches to the Constituent Assembly, Dr. Ambedkar, while underlining the importance of constitutional morality, emphasized that the essence of constitutional morality was to regard the Constitution as supreme and to follow the constitutionally mandated procedures regardless of any ideological differences. All the three organs of the state, persons gracing the constitutional posts, members of the civil society and common citizens of India are expected to abide by constitutional morality. The success of Indian constitution for a country as diverse and complex as India continues to intrigue impress and inspire experts around the world. Well, viewers, that's all I could pack for you in this edition. Thanks for watching and stay tuned to Sunset TV. Namaskar.